I want to share with you something. Remember I shared with you this, this article last week, and we never get to it. It says here, yeah, FBI raid on Trump's residence takes U.S. into uncharted territory. Now, I believe that this is highly prophetic. Highly, highly prophetic. And what I believe that this issue, the raid, the FBI raid now, next week we're going to specifically look at some interesting stuff in light of the FBI. Some wonderful stuff the Lord has been, but we can't share it now, it's too much information. But we want to specifically look at the issue, this issue of the FBI raid on Trump's home. Now, I wonder if it has any prophetic significance. I wonder. Now, I'm going to suggest that this event points us to plus minus 2024 crisis. This is, this, this is the event. You know what I'm saying? This event tells us 2024 plus minus. Highly prophetic. Now, I'm going to show you publicly before I show you all the articles what this means publicly first and from the spirit of prophecy. But before I do so, there's something that is trending within the news. It says here, Queen Elizabeth II of Britain, world's longest serving monarch dies at 96. Do you know that her death was a bell that sounded? A bell just sounded. Do you know that we are about to witness one of the greatest prophetic earthquakes in history? So what do you mean? We're going to prove in our next session what does her death mean. Friends, you must understand, nothing happens by accident. Everything is ordered. Let me say this. Do you know her death has actually opened up the doors for the final fulfillment of Bible prophecy? We're going to show you that her death actually opened up the door. And we are told in volume 7, page 14, that those who place themselves under God's control to be led and guided by Him will catch the steady thread of events ordained by Him to take place. This event means something, but we're going to come back. Interesting. By the way, what, what month did she die? September. This very month. The raid was a couple of, couple of last month, August. Let's put the date September here. Do you know that September is not an ordinary month? Say, so why do I say that? It's the birth of my mother's born. <laughs> it's no ordinary month. <laughs> I was born in September. <laughs> so it's not ordinary. <laughs> now, but on a serious note, I want you to see September truly is not an ordinary month. It says here, not an accident. It says the man of sin, Pope Francis, instructs Vatican entities. You must understand this. To move all funds to Vatican Bank by September the 30th. Friends, when the man of sin makes such a decree that was not witnessed by any pope, that every fund, you, you know that you got funds all over the world, that all these funds, no matter where you are in the world, must come immediately into the Vatican Bank. I'm telling you that all the pieces of the puzzle are coming together. Now, what's the deadline? This very month, when it ends, every fund that the Vatican owns, that the papal system, the Antichrist owns, must be in the Vatican. Now, it says, Pope imposes deadline for Vatican transfer assets to bank. So he gave a deadline and all money goes back to the bank. Pope Francis instructs again, this is all over, Pope Francis instructs Vatican entities to move all funds to Vatican Bank by the 30th of September. So there's an urgency. Why do you think, you think the man of sin is playing around? He knows exactly what's about to take place. And what did we, friends, I wish we could tell you all what the man of sin, not all, but partially reveal to you what's about to take place. Do you know the Bible teaches there was a time where dove's dung was sold for a certain amount of money? A donkey's head was sold for a certain amount of money. Yes, in the book of Kings. Now you must understand September. What is the deadline? 30th September. All funds 
must go back to the Vatican Bank. All funds. Not an accident. Not an accident. Watch the month of September. Putin and Xi could meet in September at a summit in... You can see that. Now, you don't understand what this means. We're going to show in the second session, what does this mean? September, Xi and Putin are coming together. The very month, the man of sin says, all funds must come back to the Vatican Bank. I wonder if he understands something with the King of the South. And in this, in this mix of the Kings of the South uniting to plan something, we're going to show you what they're planning. In the mix of it, the Pope is trying to halt their agenda. You say, what do you mean? In the month of September, it says here, yeah, could Pope Francis meet with Xi Jinping in Kazakhstan next week? This, year was, this, year's, this article came out this week. So what will next week be? What month are we in next week? We are still in September. Friends, do you understand that something is brewing around us? Something great and decisive is about to take place. I tell you, we are living on the brink of the eternal world. And I wish I could share everything, but I know we've got a deadline to finish the study before everything shuts down. I wish we could show you what all this means now, but it's impossible. We'll need three studies to show us all what this means. Now, I'm back to the book Education. Back to the book Education, page 2 to 8. Education, page 2 to 8. Listen to what it says. Friends, you know we are behind in our studies. We are literally behind. We are literally behind. Education, page 2 to 8. Now, I want you to see what does the prophet predict is going to take place that's going to convulse this entire world. I want you to see. And then we want to look at it prophetically and place it prophetically. This event in the book, Education, we want to place it prophetically. Where does it fit in the prophetic events? And I wonder, I just wonder, does the raid of the FBI on Trump push us to this prophetic event I'm about to read about? And I'm suggesting to you, plus minus 2024, we were studying at the camp meeting a couple of days back and we showed them this event. Unfortunately, they before you all, you all supposed to be before them, but we're behind with you all. We showed them what this meant prophetically. Let's see what the prophet says. Education, page 2 to 8. She says, At the same time, anarchy, anarchy. What does anarchy mean? Anarchy. At the same time, anarchy. Anarchy. And against arc law. At the same time, anarchy is seeking to sweep away all law, not only divine but human. And then listen to what she says. The centralizing of wealth and power, the vast combinations of the enriching of the few by the expense of the many, the combination of the poorer class for the defense of their interests and claims. You know, as I'm reading this, what God's flashing, he's flashing this, this prophetic event. I'm almost tempted to go there now. He's flashing this prophetic event. What I'm reading, has much to do with Trump's raid. I'm going to prove that. And what just happened with Elizabeth? I'm, friends, I'm not guessing. I'm telling you, we're going to prove it by God's grace. There's a link between Trump's raid, the house and his raid, and this woman's death. Let me give you a hint. Let me give you a hint. Let's see if I can find it, because I split up the study. Let's see if I can find it. Let me give you a hint. Uh, uh, I think I split it up too far. Uh, uh, where is it? Where is it? Uh, uh, I think it's... Hmm. Oh, do you know who's that man? I'm going to show you that your political leader is making statements that's going to cause South Africa to be in big trouble. I'm telling you, he is pushing, agitating the war between the king of the south and the king of the north. We're going to get there in session two, but not now. Now, you don't understand what this means. Her death triggered something. It says, he was not called King Charles. He was called the Prince Charles. 
Prince of Wales. But now he's no more Prince Charles, Prince of Wales. Not no more. He's now King Charles. There's a big difference. It says King Charles III will succeed Queen Elizabeth II, who was next in line to, the, to take the throne. Talking about his position. Who's going to take his position? But nonetheless, I want you to understand who was now king. King Charles, Prince Charles. He was Prince Charles. No more prince. He's King Charles. Now, I wish I could tell you now and let everything and show you what does this mean. But we're coming back to this in the afternoon. Amen. But more than that, more than that, do you know who's the founder of the Great Reset Movement that Klaus Schwab's in the front of? You are looking at the founder of the Great Reset right here. You will own nothing and be happy. It's not Klaus Schwab who owns it. There's the man that owns that. Klaus Schwab is the front face, but he is the owner of the movement. You must understand that a dead man something prophetically. Now back to the quotation. She says, at the same time, anarchy is seeking to sweep away all law, not only divine but human. Now listen to the quotation. The centralizing of wealth and power, the vast combination of the enriching of the few at the expense of the many. Now think, of, think, think, think with me. Does the World Economic want to enrich a few at the expense of the many? What is it called? The golden? It's the Great Reset, but it's also called the Golden Billion. She continues, she says, the combination of the poorer classes for the defense of their interests and claims, the spirit of unrest, riot, and bloodshed. Now listen to this part now. She says, the worldwide dissemination of the same teachings that led to the French Revolution, all are tending to involve the world in a struggle similar to that which convulsed France. Based on this quotation, based on the quotation, what does the woman of God say is going to convulse the entire world? She says the exact same spirit that led to the French Revolution, all is tending to involve the world in a struggle similar to that which convulsed France. So based on inspiration, what must I expect to take place? Based on this quotation, I am to see a revolution. And how much of the world must it convulse? All the world. A revolution. Now, specifically, what is it to be likened to? What kind of revolution? What revolution does she specifically point? French revolution. So there's something about the French revolution. Specifically, she mentions now, I want us to look quickly at the French Revolution. How does the Bible describe the French Revolution? Come with me in your Bible quickly to Revelation chapter 13. Revelations, the 13th chapter. Revelations, the 13th chapter. Actually, chapter 11, we come to chapter 13. Come with me to Revelation chapter 11. Revelations, the 11th chapter. Revelation chapter 11. Now, in Revelations 11, it's specifically dealing from verses 7 onwards. It's dealing with the French Revolution. Actually, when you read from verses 3 onwards, it speaks about the two witnesses who prophesy in sackcloth for 1,260 years. Who are those two witnesses? They were prophesying in sackcloth. They were persecuted and killed. The Old and the New Testament. The Old and the New Testament. We're not studying that now. And it says that when they are coming to their end of their witnessing, what she is that when the two witnesses come to their end of witnessing, when I say end, I mean they're coming out of their persecution. What year was that? 1798. So now I want you to see in verse 7, it's referring to near the time as we're nearing 1798. It says in verse 7. Are we there? Now before I read verse 7, I want you to understand this. Before we read verse 7. Okay, let's read verse 7 and I'll explain this. In verse 7 it says, And when they shall have finished their testimonies, that's the two witnesses, the Old and the New Testament, it says the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit. Pause. What does a beast represent in Bible prophecy? A kingdom, a nation. Now, how does the Bible describe this nation? What's the condition of this nation? A 
Thank you. So when we talk about the French Revolution, when we are talking about the French Revolution specifically, when the Bible refers to the French Revolution, it refers to it as a what? Bottomless pit. Please, friends, understand this. I'm going to write down great controversy to prove that when, she uses, when the Bible uses the term bottomless pit, it's referring to a state of chaos, a state of it's, it's chaos, almost like a desolate place. You can write down great controversy, I think it's 276, where the prophet says bottomless pit, revolution. Now, I want you to see what the quotation, the, the verse says. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And their bodies shall lie in the streets of that great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Now, when the Bible describes France, it gives two nations. What are those two nations? Based on verse... Sodom and Egypt, that's not our study now. But when you look at it, this is the characteristics of the French Re Revolution. There was sodomy and there was also the spirit of Egypt. Who was Jehovah? Atheism. Who was Jehovah that I should let Israel go? I know not Jehovah. That's Exodus 5 verse 2. So now, when the Bible describes the French Revolution, it uses the term bottomless pit. The prophet says that the world is going to be convulsed with the same spirit that led to the French Revolution. So can I ask a question? Must the world come to a state of a bottomless purchase before the end? I'm saying based on a quotation. Yes, because she says the same spirit that led to the French Revolution all is tending to involve the world in a struggle similar to that which convulsed France. So that means then, before the world can end, we are to see the world in a state of a what? Bottomless pit. What does that mean? A revolution similar to the French Revolution. Now come on in your Bible to place this thing prophetically. Where do I place the bottomless pit prophetically? Where do I place the French Revolution prophetically? One of the same things. When I say French Revolution, I just mean a repetition of it. Come with me to Revelation 13. Revelation chapter 13. Revelation 13, I want us to see verse 3. We're not going to get the answer here, yeah? but it's going to set us up for the answer. Revelation 13, verse 3. It says in Revelation 13, verse 3, it says, And I saw one of his heads, as it were, wounded to death. Talking about the papacy. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wandered after the beast. Now, I want to ask a question. Based on this verse, when will the world wander after the beast? Amen, when the wound is healed. Now my question is this now. When the wound is healed, the world is going to wander. When will I be rightfully able to look and I can say now with, with surety, at the Sunday law, the world wanders. So let's put that down. So what are we seeing? We, this is what we're seeing. It's at the national Sunday law that the world wanders after the beast. after the beast, after the papacy, the Antichrist. It's at the Sunday law. Now, come in your Bible to see in when do we place the bottomless pit concerning the Sunday law. Do we place the revolution before or after the Sunday law? Come with me now to Revelation chapter 17. Revelation the 17th chapter. We want to see where do I place the revolution, which the prophet says is going to convulse the entire world. Revelations chapter 17. Revelation 17. We're going to Revelation 17. Revelation chapter 17. Now before we read Revelation 17, I want you to look at this quotation. I want you to look at this quotation that is found in manuscript releases, volume 5, 305. This quotation is highly prophetic. Listen to what the woman of God says. She mentions India, China, Russia, and which other place? The city of America. Thousands of men and women are dying of starvation. And then she says, this means starvation to the poorer class, blue words, and will result in a what? A civil war. As a civil war and a revolution similar. Yes, friends. So when we are talking about a revolution, does the prophet say there's going to be a civil war? Yes. So we can expect before the end a civil war or a revolution. One of the same things. Specifically, she mentions nations there. 
Which nation do you think out of all of these nations we must specifically look at? Now we must look at all of them. We must look at India, China, and Russia, but specifically America is a prophetic nation. Highly prophetic. So when we talk about a revolution and a civil war, which nation are we looking at specifically? USA. The United, it's called the United States of America. Do you know when a revolution and a civil war comes, nothing is united. It's divided. Now, she mentions in the blue words, civil war. What does she say comes next after the civil war? There will be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which stand for the children of that people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. So according to the prophet, what is one of the major events after the civil war? No, no, no. No, look, but look at the quotation. She says, a time of trouble such as never was. Is probation open or closed? It's closed. So one of the final events, just before the close of probation, we are looking at a what? A civil war, a revolution. Why do I say that this is one of the final events before the close of probation? Because she mentions civil war, and then after the civil war, she mentions what? Time of trouble. When Michael stands up, probation is closed. So one of the final prophetic events that indicates that probation is now closed, it's going to close, based on what we just read, the civil war precedes the general close of probation. So what I'm going to say is this is the final event, or not the final, but one of the final events. And then comes the general close of probation. Now, oh, in Revelation chapter 17. Now tell me, where do I place the civil war? In Revelation 17. Take note, Revelation 17 verse 8. Where do I place the civil war? It says in Revelation 17 verse 8. Remember, oh, in Revelation 17 verse 8. Remember, when does the world wander after the peace? When can we rightfully say so? National Sunday law. Now tell me what must be the condition of the world just before the world wanders. Look at verse 8. Amen. It says, The peace that thou sowest was and is not, talking about the papacy, the Roman Catholic organization, and shall ascend, take note, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and shall go into perdition. So how, what's the condition of the world before the papacy ascends up to supremacy? It's in a bottomless pit. Now look when it ascends out. It says, and they that dwell on the earth shall wander. So what must be the condition of the world before the world wanders at the National Sunday Law? What must be bottomless pit? So would you agree with me that before the National Sunday Law, what must precede the National Sunday Law? Or comes just before the National Sunday Law. What comes just before the National Sunday Law? A revolution. Give me another word. Give me another word. Civil war. So I am to expect a civil war based on the Bible just before the papacy comes into supremacy. The condition of the world must be a civil war. Revolution. And when I see a revolution, a civil war brewing, I know the next prophetic event, not by guessing, certainty comes the National Sunday Law. Are you following, friends? And what closes our probation as Seventh-day Adventists? The National Sunday Law. I want you to understand, this was no accident by the FBI. No accident. We're going to show you who runs and controls the FBI. We're going to take you back to 9-11. We're going to show you who was behind it. Do you know that the FBI knew exactly what was going to take place? Do you know they had an inside man who was not an FBI agent? There's a name they give them. I'll get back to you with that name. And he, was, and he told him exactly, boom, boom, boom. You know what they done immediately when he told them? They fired him. I, I, the man actually recorded every conversation with them. It's on record that he told them, and he got, and the conversation is recorded. We got the recording by God's grace. He tells the man, I am feeling so bad when the bombs went off and brought down that building. He said, I feel so bad that they, they, they would not listen to me. I'm talking to an FBI agent. We got that recording. 
And the agent said, what could you, you, you done your best? We're gonna show you that this raid of Trump by the FBI was not an accident. Order out of chaos. Now, someone says, why you keep mentioning the FBI raid on Trump's house? You're talking about civil war revolution. You're saying plus minus 2024. Friends, before we saw this prophetic event, which happened last month, we were telling you plus minus 2024 crisis. Someone says he's guessing he's a time setter. <laughs> I wonder what they're going to say now. I wonder how much of a time setter I am. Calls, take note, calls for civil war. Exact words of the prophet. After the FBI, Mar-a-Lago search on new, but they are louder. The, the raid on Trump's house made a cry for a civil war. What? Louder. FBI search on Trump's Mar-a-Lago uh, reignites conservative calls for a civil war in the U.S. Friends, this is fresh of the press. Civil war mentioned double in extremist online space for Mar-a-Lago Mar raid, experts say. In other words, they're saying the experts that are looking, they see that what the FBI done has actually agitated now, something which was already brewing a civil war. Now the cries for the civil war has become louder. Growing calls for civil war in far-right groups of the FBI search. Are you seeing every article keeps telling us that the FBI raid has pushed America? Closer to a what? Civil war. More than 40% of Americans think civil war likely within a decade. What's a decade? 10 years. Americans are saying within the next 10 years we're going to expect a civil war. And by the way, who was a civil war conducted by the very citizens themselves? Americans, 43% of Americans say a civil war is at least somewhat likely in the next 10 years. All over, wherever you turn, Mulin. Take note, a second civil war. Where? Now, I want you to think with me, friends. When was the first civil war? Does anybody know when America had its first civil war? Does anybody know when America had its first? Because it says here, Mulin, a second civil war in America. Does anybody know? 1861 to 1865 was the first American civil war. Does anybody know when the Seventh-day Adventist Church was organized to start its work with, under the name Seventh-day Adventist? Does anybody know what year? 1863. When the first civil war came, the Seventh-day Adventist Church started their work. When the second civil war comes, the Seventh-day Adventist Church doesn't start their work. They are now finishing their work. My, my question is, when then is the civil war? The next one, because the next one tells me that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is about ending their work. 1865, First Civil War. 1863, SDA Church starts its work. 1. I want you to see and marvel, Civil War, 2024. The experts who are studying into the scene say 2024 it's it. Friends, this day 2024, we never make it up. Every expert in every field is pointing to 2024. We showed you publicly, plus minus 2024, fourth generation. Every expert in every field says 2024 plus minus. They are lining themselves up with the Bible and they have no clue what the Bible says. Everything points to 2024. Our probation is going to close plus minus 2024. Second American Civil War, 2024. Someone says, oh, you're out. The experts say 2025. No, no, no. We said plus minus. What does plus minus mean? It can be a little bit before, a little bit after. Again, hedge fund, this man is a historian and he's a billionaire. I was just listening to him. He says, yeah, hedge fund, billionaire, Ray Dalio warns the 2024 election will lead to a civil war. 
Friends, every historian, every thinking man is telling you the day 2024 civil war. And they're not guessing, they're saying based on the facts, America must collapse 2024. Plus, minus. And remember, the civil war precedes our close of probation, the National Sunday Law, our final test. That shows me the urgency of developing an Adventist home. Unless an Adventist home is developed, friends, you are not getting the seal. Volume 5 of the Testimonies, page 213, I believe it is. Not one of us, she says, will ever get the seal. Am I saying it right? Uh uh, not all who profess to keep the Sabbath will receive the seal of the living God. Not all who profess to keep the Sabbath will receive the seal of the living God. Why would the prophet say that when the issue is the Sabbath issue? Because she understands the real issue is the home. And that's why she says, not all who profess to keep the Sabbath will get the seal. You say, why would you say that? Do you know what she says? She says there are men who understood every point of our doctrine. Same quotation. She says they understood all the prophecies. She says, but they did not order their families after them. What was the issue? She says they understood the truth. They understood the prophecies. She says they were, they were filled with the wisdom of divine understanding. They understood all these things. But she says they did not order their families after them. That's volume 5, page 213. The real issue is the home. Let me get to my study now. Now, this is generals who know about war, who have been in war. They tell you, ex-army generals fear insurrection or civil war in 2024. How is it that every expert in the field, billionaires, thinking men, historians, and even generals, they are all pointing to, to about one date, 2024. They never come and plan, let's all point, no, no, no. These are people scattered all over and they're pointing to but one day, 2024. That this is it, friends. Plus, minus, you've got two more years. You might not even have two more years. Today might be your last day. Today might be it. I tell you, as God loves, I am pleading with God. I, I showed them at the camp meeting. I showed them 22. What I'm showing you now, I showed them. And I said, I'm pleading with God to sweep back the crisis. We are not ready, friends. We are not ready. 